Where did the purple and gold go wrong? How did a roster stacked with superstars fail to perform on a continuous basis against good and even bad teams? This season, here's what went wrong for the Los Angeles Lakers. In the number five spot we have, LeBron James was great, but only on the offensive side. LeBron James was brilliant offensively, averaging 30.3 points per game on 52.4% from the field and 35.9% from three. This season, the King was more explosive offensively and he'll easily be an NBA first or second team pick. The fact that he scored at the age of 37 is a tribute to his stats as an all-time great superstar. But James was a scorer, not always a winner. It's unrealistic to expect the King to make up for the team's defensive shortcomings at 37. But there's no doubting James looked to pass less this year than any time before, with the fourth lowest assist per game in his career. As a result of James's age, the Lakers had to compensate for his defensive shortcomings. Sadly, the team was unable to do so and lacked even worse defenders. Most importantly, many believe this roster is a result of LeBron's opinion, and as the team's leader, he should be blamed for even believing he could play well with Russell Westbrook. In the number four spot we have, Frank Vogel is not deserving of his coaching position. It's no secret that Vogel will need to find a new employment next year. While it's absolutely unreasonable to criticize the coach for the 2020 championship squad for a dismal season, he did have a role. Sure, he wasn't given the tools he needed to achieve, more on that later, and sure, his backup quarterback missed a lot of games, but as a head coach, he's responsible for getting the most out of his players, and the 11th best record in the West is unacceptable. For whatever reason, Vogel's club did not perform well enough throughout the season. Frank's club was simply terrible at protecting the rim and three-point shooting for a defensive-minded coach. Former All-Star big man Dwight Howard and DeAndre Jordan were assigned to him, but neither were trustworthy in defending the rim. Russell Westbrook and Carmelo Anthony were a liability all season, and no one dared to tell LeBron James to play defense. Overall, the Lakers signed Frank Vogel two years ago because of his defensive philosophy, and the team did not follow these ideas this season. Even if Vogel is not the primary cause of the Lakers' dismal season, he will be fired, and rightfully so. In the number three spot, we have management is to blame for a bad roster. The Lakers appeared destined for an NBA Finals appearance on paper and in NBA 2K. How could a team with LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard, and Rajan Rondo fail? Los Angeles was supposed to be a problem for Taylor Horton Tucker. But the NBA is a young man's league, and an aging club can't compete in today's game. LeBron is 37 and can't win his team's games on his own. Russell Westbrook is 33 and showing signs of inevitable athletic decline, and Dwight Howard is practically done. Carmelo, despite his prolific scoring off the bench, is a defensive liability because of his lack of experience as an on-ball defender. Rondo is gone, and he was never a good fit with Westbrook or LeBron. Many reasons justify blaming the Lakers brass. First, they let LeBron James deal for Westbrook instead of DeMar DeRozan or Buddy Heald. Secondly, they surrounded their big three with non-defensive washes. And third, they knowingly let off two key two-way players in Alex Caruso and Kyle Kuzma. The Lakers were one of the league's worst teams following the All-Star break due to a lack of enthusiasm, youth, and defense. Less criticism goes to the Lakers' as brass for failing to construct a contender. In the number two spot we have, the Lakers should have picked Russell Westbrook over DeMar DeRozan and Buddy Heald. Anyone who follows basketball knows Russell Westbrook had perhaps his worst season with the Lakers this year. The Lakers felt they could get the most out of an on-ball dominant point guard with a below average shooting talent after trading him for the Thunder, Rockets, and the Wizards. So, trusting a 37-year-old LeBron James to magically rectify it was ludicrous. Russell has decent stats in 18.5 points per game, 7.4 rebounds per game, and 7.1 assists per game, but he only shoots 29.8% from three and 66.7% from the line. Russ is perhaps the league's worst three-point shooter, yet he makes free throws at an average clip. Most significantly, Russ had a habit of missing shots and handing the ball over. Westbrook leads the NBA with 3.8 COV per game this season. This is the worst conceivable teammate for LeBron James, yet he was chosen above DeMar DeRozan and Buddy Heald. On top of that, Westbrook's post-game statements and lack of accountability for his own actions have practically let every Laker fan convinced he isn't built for this team. Again, the Lakers' management chose Westbrook over DeRozan and Heald, despite LeBron's involvement. 
DeRozan now at 28.2 points per game and 50.5 field goal percentage and healed at 15.6 points per game and a 36.6 field goal percentage would have made the squad much better. Instead, having Russell Westbrook on the squad sabotaged their prospects. The Lakers' poor roster construction, Davis's injuries, and Vogel's coaching, along with LeBron James and Russell Westbrook's ages, have all contributed to their lack of postseason success. And finally, in the number one spot, we have Anthony Davis' health sabotaged the team. If Anthony Davis had been healthy for the entire season, the Lakers might have made the playoffs. That's not to suggest that Davis was fantastic, as he improved the team. Los Angeles went 14-25 without Davis and 17-23 with him. While neither record is great, they looked better with Davis on the floor. Well guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.